going on guys? I'm Blair Snipes. This is Throttle Blip. Welcome back to the channel. I have a lot of trips planned for this year and I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along. I'm currently in Milwaukee for the Mama Tried show. Just got to my hotel so I'm going to go grab some lunch real quick and then I'll catch back up with you guys when we get to Flat Out Friday. Alright guys, so we're going to have to do a voiceover for this whole thing, both the races and the show. It was just entirely too loud, but we'll get into more of that in just a moment. So this is Flat Out Friday. Um, indoor racing, they pour like uh, syrup, like a soda syrup, Dr. Pepper syrup on the track to make it sticky. Um, I've been to a lot of flat track races, but I've never been to one indoors and never one on concrete. So this was pretty wild to me, as was this dude. <laughs> Check out this get up. Uh, much respect to this guy. He's out here on this gnarly chopper and about to run the flat track race, which is just wild to me, uh, especially against guys that are on <laughs> actual flat track bikes. I mean, I'm sure he doesn't care if he wins. He's just here to be a fan favorite, and boy, did he achieve that goal. So you see him kind of walk this thing up to the line. They take off, and to be honest, from what I remember, he didn't do all that bad. Um, pretty good. I don't know who this guy is, if maybe he actually has raced before or whatnot, but either way, he, uh, he held his own. Obviously not going to win on a machine like that against real i mean look at some of these guys have on like the whole suit and everything so not gonna win but still fun uh, these are called boonie bikes so they're just like little trail bikes like you would ride when you were a kid uh, just little cheap things but they were extremely popular uh, they had a ton of these at the race they were racing these outside of the motel i stayed at uh, as you can see this is just kind of a spectacle so they fill this whole thing with balloons. Guys are racing through it on those little booby bikes. Um, the next race coming up is just like a whatever kind of race. So just bring the wildest, craziest thing you can. Wear a crazy costume. Uh, it was fun. You know, it's entertaining, as you can see. Uh, somebody had like a, a urinal, like a job site, like construction site, like portable toilet that they raced. Uh, work from home guy there. Just all kind of cool stuff. So while i was watching this i had a really good idea that i pitched to uh someone i know at harley davidson corporate they said it was a good idea so i'm going to talk to them more about it when i go to daytona hopefully this is something that actually happens if not i'm going to try to make it happen on my own but it's in regards to this flat track race and that's kind of all i want to say about it right now until i have a chance to talk with harley corporate and see uh get a few more details if you will but this is Flat Out Friday for those that have never been. They had real races too, like pro racers and stuff. But I figured you guys would want to see the madness a little more than you would want to see that other stuff. There's the, uh, <laughs> the toilet. I think something broke. I think that ended up going down. But uh, there's a little surprise for you guys coming up in about 10 seconds probably. So in the midst of all this madness, somehow I missed this until I sat down to edit this video. And then I found this one little gem that I put, put in slow motion for you. There you go. Check that out. All right. So this is the Mama Tried show. So this is on Saturday. It's a two-day show. This is the, I think they're calling it the Snow Glide or something. So it's a CVO Road Glide that they've put tracks on pretty wild machine um i've seen some videos of it on instagram pretty rad shout out to the people that built this because that thing is awesome this is the reason why we're doing some voiceover stuff as you can see this place is absolutely packed and there's uh the ceo of harley and the vp of design of harley casually strolling around catching out uh looking at some bikes so I tried to get the signs uh, that listed the builder or listed any information on the bikes before I got the bikes. But as you can see, guys, this place was super, super packed. So there was no way I could talk in real time. Um, it was also just hard to film. So many people trying to look at the same bikes. So this was the best that I could come up with. Um, tried to get a good mix of everything. This is not all the bikes that were at the show. Um, these aren't even just all my favorites, although I really, really do like this one. Um, I mean, attention to detail on this thing is 
is insane. But I tried to get a little something for everybody in the video. And that's one thing I liked about this show was it was not just, you know, Harley Davidson's. Because, I mean, like, don't get me wrong. I'm a performance Harley guy. But, like, if I go to a, a bagger show, I don't want to just see performance baggers that are all running Olins and Legends and the same carbon fiber parts. Like, there's a lot of diversity in the show, and that I can appreciate. This was Fonzie's bike, if you ever watched uh, Happy Days. This was his bike. Thought it was pretty cool that it was there. There's the man himself, or at least in cardboard version. Hey! But yeah, so his bike, really clean, really cool bike. Uh, was getting a lot of attention. A lot of people were pumped to see that bike. I didn't technically grow up watching Happy Days, but I'd seen it before. I knew what it was, so still cool enough, still in touch enough with it to appreciate being able to see this bike in person. So again, another really cool bike. And I mean, if you go to like a, a, a normal show, you're gonna see a ton of stuff like this. And they may not stand out as much as they should because they all kind of start to look, oh, he's got the, the CVO style heated grips on there. I don't think I noticed that when I was looking at it. The built-in Garmin unit, which I like, because I mean, you can be anti-radio all you want, but let's be honest, having navigation on a bike that you actually ride is really really nice yeah you can mount your phone to the bars but having that independent unit up there is super nice this bike is very well done um, again just like with all the bikes here attention to detail you could look at these bikes forever and and still pick out things this was uh, one of the race bikes i am a big big fan of what they're doing with this king of the baggers um, bagger racing league what have you so I always have to check these bikes out. The parts on them are super trick. Seeing nice and legends front end, uh, good brakes, piggyback shocks on this thing. I mean, even like the uh, those little rubber O-rings holding the bags closed, like little stuff like that. I I dig even on street bikes. You know, even if you don't really need it. I also really love that exhaust, uh, the raw with all the welds. Like that's I may want to do that on the soft tail. I think just I, I like the race look of it. Here's a good example of some diversity, like I was talking about, something that you don't see all the time. The paint and the engraving on this bike was insane. I have no clue what it costs to do all this, but oh my God, like you could probably have two more bikes, just what he's got in the cost of engraving and paint on this bike. All that engraving is done by hand, and if you mess up, there is no like fixing it. You just start over. So, I mean, custom stuff all over this bike. Not, ne not necessarily a bike for me, but I can absolutely appreciate it. When I say it's not for me, it's because to me it's, it's art. I don't know how often I would ever actually ride it, but I do think it's awesome. So I wanted to share it with you guys. I really like this one because I had a 73 Honda CB350 myself. <laughs> Nothing like this. Check out those leather grips so awesome so clean just simple not over the top not too busy but i had the cb 350 all stock all original uh, i also had a street glide at the time i had a supermoto at the time i had a lot of bikes and i rode that little honda all the time just because it was it was different you know it wasn't the fastest didn't look the coolest but it was fun a lot of these Sportster builds, I love this tank. So that 100th anniversary emblem is like made into the tank. So like they form the metal, I guess, where it had that indention. And then they, I don't know if they epoxied it in and then clear coated over that, or I'm not sure how they achieved that look, but it was, it was nice. Um, as, as is this whole bike, like everything about this bike is yes for me. Like there's nothing on that bike that I would change. So shout out to the guys that built this one. There's another look at that gas tank so you can kind of see what I was talking about. Just beautifully done and that's why it deserved to be at the show. This old pan head, I think I saw this at the congregation show earlier or uh, late last year rather. But this thing is pretty wild all the time. Energy that went into this thing. 
and I get it's not going to be for everybody. I mean, the shape of that tank, not for me, but I can appreciate all the work that went into it. I mean, just look at this exhaust. So see how it wraps all the way up and then dumps out right there? Like, this is art. I mean, it's literally rolling art. And I like that they're doing something different. Not something you're going to see every day. Not something you're probably ever going to see anywhere else. So Royal Enfield on this one. Oh, yeah, I remember. I mean, again, just race bike looking. Doesn't have to be the performance bagger. It could be a flat tracker like this. I just like anything performance-based. So you've got the shocks on the back. You've got a real cool SMS exhaust. Looks like it's custom-made for this bike. Just anything that looks like it's made to go racing, put my name on it. <laughs> so as I said, a ton of Sportster-based builds. Um, long live the Sporty, you know, the Evo Sporty. There's a, there's a night's turn here that you're going to want to stick around for. But, I mean, these Evo Sporties are just such a good starting platform to build a bike. They'll be around forever. You have that iconic Harley Eagle and tank of this thing. Super clean and simple, not a flashy, not even an over-the-top, you know, tons of money in it. Um, apparently, I'm supposed to know who this guy is, uh, Danger Dan or whatever. I know I've seen that bike on Instagram, and that's not a dig at him. That's not, I never met the guy. I don't know him. Uh, wouldn't know him if I saw him, but apparently a lot of people know him, and he has ridden this Pan America all over the place, as you can see, and I can respect that. So where your little extra gas can or your water bottle goes, he has some wine, so evidently likes to party. Tons of storage put on this bike for these long trips he's going on. I noticed a big, <laughs> big knife sticking out the back, which I thought was pretty gnarly, pretty awesome. And I like that they put this in the show, you know, because this is motorcycling too, you know. Pan America deserves its spot, and, you know, so do people that ride. This was probably one of my favorites of the show. Uh, as you've heard me talk about, I have a motocross background. This is not technically a motocross bike. It's a hill climb bike, but based around a dirt bike frame with a Harley Sportster engine, just look at that subframe, like the frame those white braces that go behind the shrouds all this custom stuff this thing is just super sick got tons and tons of attention as it should um, I would love to see this thing in action I would love to hear it I'd love to ride it actually but either way very well done very nice build This was another heavily, heavily, even more so than the last one, engraved bike. This one happens to be a BMW, and this thing is wild. Like I said, if you mess up while you're engraving, and I just know this because I've watched stuff on YouTube and whatnot, uh, everything's engraved by hand, and if you slip or mess up, then you have to start the whole piece over. There is no real way to fix that. So if you do this, you are a very, very patient person, and if you have this done, <laughs> You're a very wealthy person, I would imagine. Uh, this one was one of the first ones when I noticed, okay, this show's going to be a little different. It's going to have a good mix of everything. So you have a Hibuso with a ton of carbon fiber. I love that headlight that they did in the front. That whole tank, the whole seat area, solid wheels look awesome on this bike. Your tail light is filled in with a carbon fiber piece with a tiny little tail light. It's probably super bright, but I, I could never do that bike justice, but I love that it was there, and I love what they did with it. And then you did have some older stuff like this, which I can appreciate. So I'm a big fan of Wheels Through Time, and I also got to check out the Harley Museum. It was literally across the bridge from my hotel. So you get to see plenty of these bikes. If this is your deal, I encourage you to check out both places, the Harley Museum and the Wheels Through Time Museum, both very well done. This was another favorite of mine. Again, flat tracker look. Um, looks like it's built to go fast. Looks like it's built to race. That exhaust on this thing is wild. 
kind of got the moto style handlebars big fan of this bike everything they've done i mean the badge they chose this tail section everything about it is awesome so shout out to these people that built this one um, i don't remember their name that's why i tried to show the sign as much as i can and that doesn't give give us much information but whoever you are shout out to you i'm gonna say this a lot <laughs> This was also one of my favorites, and that's because look at the amount of fabrication that must have gone into this bike. Like, dude, this thing is on an absolute another level. You know, I wish I could have chatted with some of these builders a little bit, maybe featured these bikes a little bit more. This one would have been at the very top of the list. I have a lot of questions about the time they put into this um, I'm not familiar uh, American Metal or American Metals I think is the company that did it that was their logo there on the seat but this thing is, is literally a work of art but I hope I hope they still ride this thing that would be rad if they're actually getting it out on the street putting it to use I get it if you're not but man that's just it's, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic. You say too nice to ride, but that's what I want to see him do is ride. Uh, this was, uh, I believe his first name's Jared. I know everybody knows him as Weems, and I know a lot of you have seen this bike. I saw it uh, out in California at Born Free. Um, I saw it in Florida at Blockhead's grand opening thing. This bike is on another level, just an, an old school drag bike. I'm sure you can find other videos where they've talked to him a little bit more about this bike, what all he's got in it, what he's going to do with it. But this bike is just, again, it's, it's probably one of my favorites at the show because it's so unique. Here's some of the weirdness that was going on at the show that kind of gives you an idea of why I wasn't able to get better video uh, and why we're having to do voiceover for the show it's just there's so many people in there it's so loud and this was on saturday i heard sundays are way less busy and i could see that but i went to the show saturday and i wanted to go to the museum on sunday so i didn't go back to the show this thing is rad the old fmf pipe if you're a motocross guy you'll recognize that pipe that carbon fiber heat shield on there is rad so this is an old kawasaki where everything is like the whole tank the whole section the tail section everything carbon fiber uh, custom exhaust in that they ran it a custom way but it looks like a full fmf setup which i dig i'd love to hear this bike and see what it sounds like it also looks like a good time to ride again i don't i probably don't have the skills to do justice to some kind of machine like this but I would absolutely love the opportunity to ride it nonetheless. And see that tiny little tail light back there? I dig stuff like that, which is a good sign. That means they must ride it. Uh, same thing with the headlight. They've got that teeny tiny little headlight which I like. I mean, this bike, you don't want to put some big obnoxious light. I don't know who makes that thing. I would imagine, though, it's some super expensive, super bright light. But this old WR, like, I, I really, really do want to get an old bike going. If not this year, maybe next year, something fun we'll do on the channel. We'll see how that goes. This one was awesome, too. Um, everything on this bike was was well done um the paint made to look old different approach i don't hate it but everything else on the bike is awesome uh put the, the mid controls uh the low rider st and low riders do come with the mid controls as a different mid control setup as you can see you know lots of exhaust work just lots of work done to this bike in general so I thought it was odd that it has the stock risers and stuff on there. Not knocking it by any means, just I thought that that was odd. This thing was pretty rad. Again, you don't have to have some big, crazy, expensive build 
to be invited to the show and that's what i dig there's a little something for everybody there's high-end builds there's low-end builds there's stuff like this i thought this thing was rad that's kind of what i grew up on so i would get dirt bikes that were too big so that i would grow into them so we didn't have to buy so many um so i used to ride old stuff like that this was a very interesting <laughs> paint job uh, not sure if there's a backstory behind this or not I would love to know but for some reason it kind of works for me like I don't I don't hate it I don't know the backstory I don't know if there's some kind of inside joke but it just kind of works maybe it's also the black and yellow black and yellow is a good color combo this thing was rad too a good like cafe racer style uh, really high-end components on this you see the Brembo's up front uh, Olin suspension one thing I liked about this is see that stitching on the fairing so this bike has been dropped or something at some point and I love that they just stitched it up uh, with zip ties or something probably I can dig that like that's my style even though everything on that bike is super nice they're not afraid to just kind of patch it up, and for some reason, it, it works. This one was rad. Um, just one of those over-the-top builds where you just you literally touch every part, change every part, paint it, do something to make every single thing on this bike unique. And I think they did a great job in doing so. This one was also really nice, and I like it because it's simple and clean. Uh, if I did an older bike, I think I would do something like that. Maybe a little more crusty. I tend to like older bikes. I like them to be a little more original, a little more crusty. Although this polished is... I'm torn because it, it does look really nice. But then I worry, like, then you're going to be all stressed out about it while you're riding it. Here's the Nitesra I was telling you guys about. So this belongs to a friend of a friend. Uh, I was hoping I could link up with him at some point during the show and feature this bike a little bit more because I would love to show off all the stuff he's done. But that's what a Nightster should look like to me. Like that thing is, is just over the top, super nice. Really dig everything he's done. It, it's a wild bike, but it, it works. This was just kind of trying to bounce around. This was super busy, like right here around this area of bikes. It was just hard to maneuver, hard to get around. So showing you guys stuff got kind of tricky. <laughs> this one turned a lot of heads. So what you have here is a Lowrider S that they have stretched and raked. And I mean, this thing is tall, like I'm with boots on I'm basically six feet and you can kind of see how tall it is compared to me um, that okay here's a good example when I said crusty that's kind of what I mean like not filthy oily dirty greasy but original you know maybe uh, let me know down in the comments if you want me to do something old on the channel uh, I have to finish the soft tail first but maybe that's the next thing we do i don't know let me know so we're going to end it here guys with the road glide 3 that harley davidson built all the bells and whistles like the video if you enjoyed it uh, subscribe if you're not already and i'll catch you guys in the next video